Got a little something different planned for y'all today. This is something I mentioned a while back and finally now getting an opportunity to do it. We're gonna go about 30 minutes here from my place to a citrus farm. Go see a lady who knows everything there is to know about growing citrus. Hopefully see a lot of the different varieties she grows and get some good citrus growing tips. For those of you who want to grow your own oranges or other citrus varieties in your backyard. So we're here at Joe Nina Farms. We've got Miss Lindy Savelle with us here and going to talk a little bit about the boom in the citrus industry recently and how she grows out all these wonderful plants here and all these different varieties. So you started growing citrus after being in law enforcement for 34 years. 34 years. And now you've got this huge greenhouse full of trees here. How many different varieties? Over 100 varieties in here. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And you were telling me earlier that one of the reasons why you're doing this or one of the reasons why it has been booming so much is because there's been a demand for lots of different varieties. Where as people had satsumas, just satsumas were all people planted, mm -hmm. but there's so many other things that can be planted okay. down here. In Georgia, right? you can plant, if it's on a coal hardy root stock, most likely you can grow it outdoors in the ground here. Now, limes, in the scheme of coal hardiness, you have kumquats at the top and you have limes at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of limes that are a little tricky for growing outdoors. You wouldn't necessarily want to grow them commercially outdoors. But for a homeowner, if you're willing to go to the effort of freeze protect it and keep it warm and covered up during the freezes or the frost, and it's on a coal hardy stock, you can, you can put it in the ground here. Awesome. So you're doing... Grapefruits, limes, lemons, navels, navels, you name it. All, all the novelties. I've got a couple of really uh, interesting ones I can show you. I don't have the fruit here, but we sell a lot of Australian finger limes, okay. which is, uh, which is a, a lime about the size of your finger. Mm -hmm. The vesicles in it are round shaped. So and normally citrus is teardrop shaped vesicles. This is round shaped. So when you cut the fruit, and it's literally like a small banana shape. Okay. Um, when you cut it open, it oodles out these little round vesicles, and it's called citrus caviar. Huh. So that's a novelty that we sell a lot of those trees. Okay. So you have 100 different varieties in here, you said? Over 100 different varieties. We keep adding to it, you know. That's wow. <laughs> wow. That's pretty cool. So these trees right here, mm -hmm. you're certified to ship them all over the country. We do. We're USDA certified, mm -hmm. and um, we can ship to, to any state except for seven citrus-producing states, like Florida, California, Arizona, Hawaii, Louisiana, Texas. Okay. So, so seven, the, seven states total that, that produce citrus fruit that they don't want our trees coming in. I got you. And there's people... Regardless if they live in the South, growing these trees, maybe on their patio and bring them inside during the winter. Yeah. Yep. So oh, we, as I was telling you earlier, we ship from Maine to Washington States, North and South Dakota. I've got a friend that lives in Minnesota and she has a pink variegated lemon. Wow. In the sun room. That's awesome. So, That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's really, people are really into um, being able to grow their own fruit, especially lemons and limes, you know. Yeah. You can do so much with lemons and limes. Oh, yeah. Around, and they bloom often. Right. So people really enjoy doing that. So we have, how old is this tree right here? Oh, this tree is about, I'd say about a 18 months old. Um, it is a patio tree, patio Meyer lemon. Okay. And it's on a dwarf root stock. Okay. So this would be one that we were talking about. You put uh, in a pot and grow inside in your sunroom or or um, on your patio and just bring it in in the winter time. This is a very popular uh, tree. So how tall will this get? Mm, probably about five feet. Uh, you, but you you can trim it back and keep it four feet. You can aggressively this, prune it to whatever works with. Well, you have to be you have to be cautious about the fact that when you're trimming i don't know if you can see this it's got blooms on it mm -hmm. but when you trim this you know you're potentially clipping off the part of the stem that would have the fruit okay so you can trim it back and it, it, it might not bloom the next year be the next year okay. people ask me that question all the time they say why does why is my tree it was loaded with fruit last year and 
it's not doesn't have hardly any this year. And I said, well, tell me, tell me about your tree. What did you do to it? And they go, oh, we just tr- we just pruned it. I was like, if you aggressively pruned it, you probably cut off all your. But I see. I see. So, so yeah, so you can see here this one. If I flipped all this off, you know, it, it wouldn't have right. You lose bugs. a lot of fruit. Yeah, lose a lot of fruit. But um, this is one of our most popular ones that we ship online. So patio Meyer and a lot of those novelty items. And so they're all on the cold hardy rootstock. Yes, all we we graft them all on cold hardy rootstock. Well, we actually bud them on cold hardy. Right, right. I just use graft in general terms, but they in the south. If you're going to put a tree outside in Georgia, Alabama, mm-hmm. it needs to be on cold hardy rootstock to survive. It just gives it a a, a more uh, greater attempt at life, you know, when freeze comes. I got you. So. But yes, these are cold hardy rootstock, which is a little slower growing than your more aggressive rootstocks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So people look at it and they go, oh gosh, that tree's 18 months old. Well, it's because it's on a cold hardy rootstock. So we have to wait for this rootstock to get big enough to bud onto. And that could take, you know, four to eight months. I see. And then you bud and you grow it. Okay. And the size of this pot holds it back a lot too. Right. Right. So how cold hardy is this tree? This is uh, uh, on Flying Dragon, which in my personal opinion is one of the most cold hardy varieties of rootstock. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's a lemon, and it's a Meyer lemon. So in, in, in the cold hardiness scheme, lemon is not high up on the ladder. Right. It's more down towards the bottom. But a Meyer is a cross with an orange, so it gives it... A little more hardiness. Okay. So what what I normally tell people is, if it's going to be more than four hours of freezing temperatures, you need to be bringing this tree inside, covering it up. Okay. Doing something. Um, four hours is kind of the mark. Okay. So it'll go down. You know, I've got a yuzu lemon that'll go to ten degrees all by itself outside. But this is a this is a true uh, lemon. Crosser than orange, so it it's gonna in the high twenties. You need to be trying to protect. It. Okay, so like it's been being lately, where it just gets down to thirty two for an hour, or so they're fine. Yeah, as long as it doesn't stay there, doesn't stay for a long period. It's the longevity of the the freezing temperatures that will crack the wood on the tree. Uh, okay, cool. and for commercial groves, you know, we do a number of things like we freeze protect the trees with water. And we cover them up with different things, uh, tree TPs, tree defenders, all of those things. When you've got an investment of thousands of trees out there. Oh, yeah, be. for sure. For sure. Yeah. So when is the ideal time to, is there an ideal time to plant a citrus tree? We used to tell everyone to plant, you know, at, after Easter, you know, because okay. you can always get a, a late freeze. But... What we're learning is that you actually can plant almost all year citrus. If you plant this late in the year, mm-hmm. you need to be just putting a tree in the ground and not putting any fertilizer. Don't don't trim it. Don't do anything that's going to keep it from going dormant. So we, we've had a commercial grower last year plant trees in December, and they did fine. It scared me. But they did it, and it worked fine. But I, I would say ideally... The springtime is the best. Uh, we here on our farm in the in the spring we have a citrus tree day, and that's when we encourage people to come out and get trees. And okay, plant. so y'all have a day where people can come locally here and buy trees. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. We ship trees. We um, but we also have people can come here to the farm and buy trees. Okay. And we kick off the the buying and planting season with a citrus tree day. Okay. Yeah. And so do you when when people come out, do you how do you kind of Show you have tags, or how do they see what the eventual product the fruit's going to look like? Well, we we don't have fruit that time of year, right? Obviously, course, yeah. so we at, we encourage people to kind of look at the website. Okay, do you have pictures of fruit on the website? Mm-hmm. Okay, we yeah, we have pictures of fruit, um, and every tree is tagged by by law. We have to put our license number and everything on there, so you can see what you're getting. Mm-hmm. But we. Pretty much offer people with whatever kind of tree that we have available, they can purchase. Um, 
and and it last year it was unbelievable. We were quite overwhelmed how many people were lined up wow. outside the gate to uh, to get in because it's there's very few places in Georgia where you can buy citrus trees. Yeah, you know. Well, yeah, and probably has a lot to do with the fact that so many regulations. Yeah. Yeah, sanitary yeah. stuff you have to have. Well, the whole USDA certification has been huge for us. It yeah. It's a costly expense, but a very worthy thing that, that it was worth it to us. Oh, I bet. So that we feel like our trees get a little bit of a head start. They're not exposed to the elements, and it, uh, it's just a certified tree. Uh, we've got next week, US, USDA comes and inspects us once a month. And Georgia Department of Ag inspects us every other month, and they test us twice a year. So you're you're looking at a lot of eyeballs on our trees. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So tell me more about this yuzu lemon here. Yeah, which you said was the number, number one. one foodie of 2022. Is really, uh, this is the most sought after lemon there is in America. I'd never heard of it, of course, till I got in the citrus business, but. It's a yuzu lemon, and it will go down to 10 degrees by itself. Wow. In the ground, outside. So that's huge. So you can grow that in North Georgia mountains if yeah. you wanted to. Or yeah. A lot of different Plus it's places. going to get below 10. Okay. It's uh, it's most known, obviously, for its culinary use. Mm -hmm. So a yuzu lemon, it's not very pretty lemon. It's lumpy, bumpy, got big pores. It's not shaped like a traditional lemon. It's more round. Um, almost like a uh, a miniature pumpkin size, you know, but it's yellow. Right. And it's, it, uh, it, you know, normally when you think of using lemon for cooking, you think of, I've cooked my food, I squeeze it over apples. Right. Mm -hmm. But a yuzu, you, you can squeeze it on during the cooking process, and it's the only lemon that maintains its flavor through the heat process. Okay. So that's why chefs and cooks and, and a lot of people that are doing culinary, have culinary uses for it, that's why they like it, because it's not only that one squeeze at the end, but they can use it through the cooking process. That's pretty neat. So how big do those get? It depends on the rootstock. Okay. So most of these are on a traditional rootstock that would probably get about 12 feet tall. Okay. Yeah. Nice size tree. Nice size tree. Yeah. Now, t so I noticed your trees out there in the orchard, which we'll go look at in a minute, are, I don't know, a little taller than my head or so. Mm -hmm. But my neighbor down the road has some type of citrus tree, and it is massive. Yeah. So is there an do you try to keep yours smaller, or are they just younger trees? Well, those trees are six years old. Okay. So, but the rootstock determines the size of the tree and the cold hardiness of the tree. Uh, okay, I got. So, you. as I mentioned to you earlier, flying dragon is a dwarf rootstock, so it's a dwarf tree, but it's also extremely cold hardy. Okay. So, your neighbor probably has what's been over the years uh, been used a Carrizo or Kaharski rootstock here okay. in Georgia, and it. Uh, it's probably up by the building, too, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what everybody did. They planted it way too close. We tell people, do not plant that tree too close to anything. Yeah. You know, they get yeah, that, and that helps protect it. You know, the heat of a house or a building or just the protection from the wind. So as far as protecting them from really cold temperatures, is there an advantage to keeping the tree small in your orchard? Not really. No? No. Um so on a dwarf tree, if we had dwarf trees in our grove, they would be planted tight together uh -huh. because, you know, they're not going to get very big. And you and you do want them to, to turn into a hedge. Okay. You know, like, like you're right. looking down the road. Right. Right now, when we go out in our grove, we'll, there'll be gaps between them because back in the day when we planted six years ago, people were using a 15 by 20 spacing. So 15 is too far apart between the trees, and 20 is too close between the rows for a commercial road. But live and learn. Yeah. <laughs> so if someone's interested in any of these trees, how can they purchase one? They can visit our website. Uh-huh, which uh, is? GeorgiaGrownCitrus.com. Okay, so GeorgiaGrownCitrus.com, mm -hmm. and you ship? And we ship trees, uh, or if they are close by and they want to come pick up trees, you know, they can either wait till the spring for our citrus tree day. Okay. Or we can ship them to them now. And they can, a lot of people are still buying trees now because it's really hard to find some of these varieties. 
So they buy them now and either maintain them in the pot they come in or they put them in a bigger pot and just put them outside by the side of their house, keep them watered. And if it's freezing, they just pull them inside or in the, in, in the garage or something. So if somebody, say, in Maine orders a tree off your website now, you wait and ship it in the spring? We would. Okay. Yeah. We okay. Would. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And are there um, some varieties that are kind of limited as far as availability goes that you run yeah. out of every year? Yeah. Oh, yes. We um, we always run out of bergamots. Uh, we're close on uses, uh, Australian finger limes. There are certain uh, satsumas we, we get low in numbers. We've got a hundred something varieties, but we've sold out of a lot of them. But we're we're getting ready to to uh, you know update our website with the new inventory mm -hmm. numbers, and we're also going to do pre sales this year because people in, like a person in Maine, for instance, you know you don't want to wait till March to order it because it may be sold out by then. So you can order it now and tell us when you want us to ship. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, we leave. We can leave that up to you. That makes you sense. Know, you just put in a note section. Don't ship this till to Maine until right, right. You know, April first. Yeah. And as fast as you've grown in the last few years, it's probably been tough to even do any kind of forecasting as far as what kind of inventory you're going to need. Well, we we I have help now <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you just look at the numbers of what's flying out the door and. Uh, another one that we're getting ready to update is uh, Santa Teresa lemon. That's a very popular lemon as mm -hmm. well. And um, I'm sure we'll sell out. Red lime. We oversold last year, and that's not good for business. Right. We don't have the customers. That's right. That's but, right. you know, you do make mistakes, especially as a growing little business. You're, you're going to make mistakes. And you just have to be honest with the people and say, hey, we oversold. Yeah. Yeah. We thought we had 20 and we had 10. Yeah. Or 12. <laughs> right, yeah, we didn't do it on purpose. Yeah, yeah I know yeah. how that is. Yes. I know how that is. Well, y'all be sure to go check out Lindy's website. And if you watch on YouTube, we'll put a link in the description below. Go check that out and uh, check out some of these varieties. Like she said, you can grow them anywhere. It's just your way up north. Got to bring them in inside in the winter. And on the next video, we're about to go outside. Hopefully, we've got enough daylight left. I'm going to go outside and look at some of these varieties. She's got lots of fruits on the trees out there and kind of show you some of the different varieties she has. All right. Overwhelmed mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life